good evening dear students i am dr nm ganeshan department of physics erode sengundar engineering college in this valuable session i like to share some information regarding semiconductors before to see the semiconductors i like to convey some information regarding the conductors insulators and our topic main topic semiconductors if i ask what are conductors any element which conduct the electricity and the thermal energy easily from one place to another place are called conductors if i ask a question give example for conductor means you will surely give that silver iron copper nickel cobalt and so on no doubt at all if i further should a question that among you said which is the best conductor what would be your answer it may it my questions mad you to think that means without uh, knowing clear a uh, scientific reasons we cannot uh, give the answers the conductivity of any element it is is determined only by the free electrons available so free electrons not the total number of electrons so you just have some an idea that the element having more atomic number will not be a best conductor you just have it in our nut cell next insulators if i ask a question so what are insulators means you, you can surely say that plastic rubber wood these are all insulators you might have something that um, uh, these are all materials these material material also made up of atoms those atoms also having electrons then why the rubber plastics and wood are not conducting electricity you might have some question the reason is that they are also made up of atom atom consists of electrons these electrons are tightly bounded with the nucleus they are no they are not able to uh, detached from the uh, nucleus that is why they are act as a insulator i hope that you may know something about conductor and insulator and next we shall say our topic called a semiconductor it has hold both the properties of conductor and insulators again you can ask that sir how it is possible yes it is possible the semiconductor will act as a insulator at a low temperature why that means that low temperature is not sufficient to dislodge the electron from the atomic configuration that means not the detach an electron the heat energy which is uh, used to disturb the atomic configurations of semiconductor is not able to detach the electron from the atomic configuration so no electrons are released no covalent bonds are broken that is why electrons are not available in the conduction band whenever the electrons are available in the conduction band then only it will back to the conductor this is the reason behind for the semiconductor to act as an insulator at a low temperature whereas as temperature increases even at room temperature some semiconductors um covalent bonds are broken once covalent bonds are broken um, by thermal agitation electron and hole pairs are produced these electrons enter into the conduction band and provide the conductivity whereas uh, holes present in the valence bands also moving this also gives a contribution for the conductivity in the case of semiconductor both the uh, conductivity of electron and the conductivity of holes are considered but in the conductor only contribution is considered uh, by the movement of electron alone this is the major difference between the conductor and the insulator i hope that there the, this introductions might be uh, enough to you 
um, before to say that the topic that i am going to cover in this uh, session is displayed for you team uh, the first one is conductor and semiconductor i said already to you the difference between conductor and semiconductor for your nuts all in semiconductor and the conductivity is uh, due to the contributions of electron as well as of holes but in conductor uh, electron alone responsible for the conductivity of a conductor next some properties of semiconductor the main and foremost properties of mm, uh, semiconductor is uh, negative temperature coefficient i will see i will deal this one in the forthcoming slides and then explanations on the basis of band gaps uh, you should know something about the band gaps uh, this is a gap between the valency band and the conduction band uh, valency band is nothing but the uh, electron valence electron occupied the band formed by the valence electrons are called valence band uh, it is the topmost filled band uh, beyond that band there is a called uh, uh, conduction band it is a topmost empty band unless electrons are uh, jumped from valence band to conduction band there is no conductivity is possible in the case of conductor that means when now the electrons are available in the conduction band then only the conductivity is possible and the gap between the conduction band and valence band is called forbidden gap usually none of the electron will have any energy level in this gap that is why it is called as a uh, forbidden band gap after that uh, we classify the semiconductor into two types intrinsic semiconductor eccentric semiconductors further the eccentric semiconductor is classified into n type semiconductor and a p type semiconductor uh, we will see later under one topic is preparations of different types of semiconductor also variations of one's semiconductor is prepared how the fermi level is varying in the semiconductor how to explain to you uh, before to say that one you just uh, Uh, remain the word about the fermi levels what is a fermi level it is a level topmost um, energy level filled by the electron at 0 degree kelvin is called the fermi levels or it is a level which uh, distinguishes the filled electron state and unfilled electron states once we prepared a semiconductor we should identify whether the given material is conductor or insulator or semiconductor if it is semiconductor what type of semiconductor whether a n type semiconductor or p type semiconductor we have to analyze all these uh, within this session see uh, this is some atomic configurations of uh, an ion as i said already to you that not only decide the total number of electron in the case of conductivity as i said and the number of electron present in the outermost orbit may decides the uh, conductivity of a conductor uh, in this diagram you could un- uh, understand that how to fill the orbits by the electrons here 2n squared formula is used 2 is a constant n is the number of orbit if um, for first orbit if we, n is 1 then we can enter 2 into 1 squared that is 2 in the for um, first orbit only two electrons are filled second orbit may be called as 2 into 2 squared 
2 squared means 4, 4 into 2 means 8. In the second orbit, 8 electrons are filled. In the third orbit, 2 into 3 squared. 3 squared means 18, 9. Sorry, 3 squared means 9. 9 into 2, 18. So, in the third orbit, 18 electron may be filled. By the way, you can you just split for ion. Uh, how many electrons are uh, putting there? For copper, zinc and ion, D block elements 29, 30 and 26. You just check it. In the first orbit, 1, 2 electrons are present. Second orbit, 8 electrons are present. And check in the third orbit and the final orbit. In this orbit, in the final orbit, only 2 electrons are present. These electrons are called valence electrons. Um, whenever the external disturbance is given, that means uh, thermal energy is given or light energy is given, uh, the outermost electrons, that is called valence electrons, uh, only two are ready to detach from the uh, nucleus. Others are not showing that much interest means the attraction is much compared to the uh, electron present in the valency um, outermost orbit. Are you clear, ma? Okay. Shall I pass to next slide? See, this is an uh, atomic configuration for uh, silicon. It is uh, one of the um, elemental semiconductors. Suppose if you are asked uh, to give example for the elemental semiconductor, means hmm, you can boldly say that um, silicon and germanium are the um, two elemental semiconductors. Uh, you just see the atomic configurations of silicon and the electron occupancy is using the same formula 2n square in the last orbit it has some 1 2 3 4 electrons these are the valency 4 valency uh, similarly uh, if you consider the another silicon atoms it also have 4 and 4 valency electrons the adjacent silicon atoms are joined together um, by a covalent bond, the bond is formed by sharing the adjacent electrons. So, four covalent bond formed, and the four covalents are formed by sharing the adjacent electrons of silicon. These are some basic information of them, the elemental semiconductors. Um, one more thing the band gap value for the silicon is 1.1 electron volt. Its meaning is that if you want to eject an electron, that is the four electrons from the um, valency um, from the outermost orbit or valency electron uh, can be uh, dislodged with the help of giving minimum 1.1 electron volt. If you give that much energy, then only the electron will be uh, released from this atomic configuration and reaches the conduction band. The minimum energy needed to move electron from valency band to conduction band is, co uh, is the um, um, band gap energy, 1.1 electron volt. And the valence electron form a band called valency band and the band above the uh, valency band is called conduction band. Once the atom is uh, irradiated with the uh, thermal radiation, uh, the electron from um, valency band jump into the conduction band. As a result, uh, a hole is formed in the valency band and electron is uh, present in the conduction band. This leads the because of the broken of covalent bond. Once a covalent bond is broken, a hole and electron fair is formed. Next one elemental semiconductor is germanium. Uh, its band gap energy is um, 0.75 electron volt. Uh, that means uh, 
the energy needed uh, to move electron from valence band to conduction band is just point point seven five electron volt. Uh, these are the basic elemental semiconductor. We shall see the next slide. These are them. And the, uh, to understand the, some properties of um, semiconductors, uh, um, for your favor, I will go through it. You just um, see and verify. The resistivity of a semiconductor is uh, less than the insulator, but uh, higher than a conductor. Uh, you should know the resistivity, the word uh, resistivity. It is a positional force uh, given to the flow of charge carriers. Why I am using here charge carrier means in the semiconductor we are considering both electron and holes. In the case of um, conductor we have to consider only the electrons. Resistivity or resistance is nothing but the opposition force given to the flow of charge carriers. Uh, the conductors have electrical resistivity on the order of 10 power minus 8 to 10 power minus 4 ohm centimeter whereas insulators have the electrical resistivity on the order of 10 power 8 to 10 power 18 ohm centimeter uh, semiconductor have an electrical resistivity uh, between uh, uh, conductor and insulator that is uh, 10 power minus 4 to 10 power plus 8 ohm centimeter. The conducting property of a semiconductor changes when a suitable metallic impurity is added. It is very essential if you want to prepare a semiconductor for a particular application or task, we have to add the impurities suitable to us, which is very important property for us. Uh, I may uh, uh, use a word that uh, negative temperature coefficient. Negative temperature coefficient means uh, in the case of semiconductor, uh, as temperatures increases, the resistivity decreases. And to explain this one, we select this graph, same in the x axis, we are taking temperature. In the y axis, resistance is taken. See, as temperatures increases in the graph, resistivity or resistance decreases. As one increases, another one is decreasing. So that is why they are saying that the resistance is inversely proportional to temperature. Uh, it is uh, technically called as negative temperature coefficient. The opposite is to conductor but in the case of conductor that is in the case of conductor as temperatures increases resistance also increases why you might have some questions in your mind you may have if you have any chance to ask me i will be and give the answer like that for in the case of conductor as temperatures increases resistance increases because um, in the case of conductor, the lattice vibration is directly proportional to temperature. As temperatures increase, the lattice vibration also increases. The lattice vibration is similar to the wave formed in seas. Once wave is uh, more, a swimmer cannot easily swim and reach the seashore. If um, there is no waves in sea, a swimmer can easily swim and reach the sea shore. This is true in the case of conductor. In the case of conductor, as temperatures increases, lattice planes start to vibrate. Ups and down. As a result, electron cannot move from one place to another place or one end to another end easily. That is why resistance is more in the case of conductor but in the case of semiconductor 
as temperatures increases number of coal and burn broken increases as coal and burn broken increases number of charge carriers also increases if one bond is broken one electron and hole pair is formed on the electron reaches to the conduction band whereas of holes present in the valency band uh, as temperatures increases charge carrier multiplications also increases so the conductivity also increases what about the resistivity as conductivity increases resistivity decreases conductivity increases means charge carriers increases charge carriers are electron and holes but in the case of conductor temperature increases means lattice vibration increases so electron not easily transfer from one point to another point there the conductivity contribution is only due to the electron movement but in semiconductor not like that the conductivity movement is sorry the conductivity is uh, due to the contributions of movement of electron in the conduction band as well as um, uh, movement of holes in the valency band that is why in the case of semiconductor alone as temperature increases resistivity decreases conductivity increases this could be explained using the simple diagram next we can explain semiconductor conductor and insulator on the basis of band theory in the case of conductor if you watch the slides carefully valence band and conduction band are very close and overlap each other so at any temperature even if you bring to minus 273 degree celsius a conductor will act as a conductor it never changes its character electrons moving from valence band to conduction band because they are overlapping each other the flower bracket shows that uh, they are overlapping there is no gap no forbidden gap but in the but in the case of insulator left most see conduction band there is a huge band gap between the conduction band and valence band here the band gap value is very very large compared to conductor insulator sorry conductor and semiconductor so it is not possible to move electron from valence band to conduction band that is why a rubber plastic wood always act as a insulator next we are coming to our topic semiconductor it is a in between the band gap value is in between the conduct uh, conductor and insulator so uh, sometimes at low temperature and the electron present in the valence band cannot move you enter move or enter into the conduction band because the thermal agitation is the energy given to valence band is not enough electron present in the valence band is not enough so uh, bond will not be broken as a result uh, chances to go to conduction band by the electron is very less or uh, more or less zero so a semiconductor will act as a insulator at a very low temperature in a single word we can say that at low temperatures electrons are not available in the conduction band as well as holes are not available in the 
valence band so it act as a insulator the main reason is that at low temperature the thermal energy thermal energy available around the conductor is not enough to break the bond the semiconductors are usually formed by the covalent bonds the if the bond broken then only a hole and the electron pairs are formed bond broken means electron jump into the conduction band no holes remain present in the valence band then both of them contributing for current Uh, so in a single statement we can say that a semiconductor can act as a insulator at low temperature and act as a conductor at a high temperature next as we know something about the semiconductors we how to split the semiconductors on the basis of um uh, purity and impurity that is intrinsic semiconductor it is a few form of semiconductor eccentric semiconductor that is a impure form of semiconductor further the uh, eccentric semiconductor classified as n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor for preparing n type semiconductor we need the pentavalent element phosphorus uh, arsenic antimony like that if you add these element with this intrinsic semiconductors uh, and the intrinsic semiconductor semiconductor become a n type eccentric semiconductors in this case uh, one excess electron always always available suppose mm, gallium indium is added with the intrinsic semiconductor means they become the p type semiconductor here the majority carriers are holes whereas in the n type semiconductor the majority carriers are electrons so we shall see in the next slide by having these ideas uh, that is semiconductor can further classified into intrinsic semiconductor and eccentric semiconductor again the eccentric semiconductor eccentric semiconductor are uh, split into p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor see in the case of intrinsic semiconductor semiconductors that are chemically pure in other words free from impurities are termed as intrinsic semiconductor that is a in a single word we can say that a pure form of semiconductor is called crystalline clean crystalline clear semiconductor is called uh, intrinsic semiconductor the number of holes and electrons therefore determined by the properties of the material itself instead of impurities the silicon and the germanium are the two examples of intrinsic semiconductor uh, i already said that and their band gap value also while silicon and germanium doped with them aluminum indium phosphorus arsenic and other elements and there are pentavalent elements they become the eccentric semiconductors in the case of intrinsic semiconductors the bond formation is covalent bond uh, if you carefully watching them atomic configuration four electrons are present in the outermost orbit they are called valence electrons each and every silicon atom has four valence electrons these four valence electrons are used to form the covalent bond by sharing the adjacent electron with the neighboring silicons
suppose if this structure is exposed with the uv radiation the uv has much energy immediately all the coulomb bonds will be broken as a result electrons are entered into the conduction band and whole electron pairs are formed as a result their conductivity is start to increases in the case of intrinsic semiconductor alone number of electron present in the conduction band as well as the number of holes present in the valence band will be equal okay we shall move to them on the slide see in the case of phosphorus if you add the phosphorus as an antimony uh, to get a pentavalent impurities see it has uh, 1 2 3 4 5 electron present in the valency all uh, outermost orbit called valence electron if i ask how many valence electron means 1 2 3 4 5 5 number of electron present in the outermost orbits are called valence electrons but in silicon and the valence electron is 4 those four electron is sufficient to form them covalent bonds with the neighboring atoms it may be the silicon as we are adding phosphorus at the phosphorus contribute four electron silicon contribute four electron as a result a covalent bond is formed whereas in the phosphorus uh, donate one more excess electron that is why the this type of semiconductor is called eccentric semiconductor find yes see them uh, bonding between the phosphorus and the silicon phosphorus is a pentavalent element it has five electrons out of five electrons four electrons are used for forming the covalent bond with the silicon uh, the excess one is fifth electron is free and these electrons all together if one phosphorus is added one extra electron is available if we add 10 per 20 atom per centimeter cube more number of excess electrons are available these electrons together form a energy level very close to conduction band so an additional energy levels are formed further um, when these types of energy levels are formed means even at a uh normal temperature electron can getting energy from external source and goes to the conduction band immediately no need to wait or accept electron from valence band to conduction band once the phosphorus atom donor energy levels are formed the phosphorus atom ionized as a result electron released and it goes to Uh, conduction band and the holes will be developed in the donor level itself and to transfer uh, or to make ionization uh, the pentavalent element is less so when the electron from ionized electrons ionized atoms uh, donate the electron to the conduction band uh, lead the conductivity in the conduction band as well as holes in the 
down our energy levels see the diagram uh, in n type semiconductor donor energy levels formed because of donor atoms and acceptor energy levels formed in the case of p type semiconductor the acceptor energy level formed means here in n type semiconductor as adding phosphorus as an egg antimony they donate one more electron excessively these electrons together form a energy level very close to conduction band and ready to go to conduction band but in the case of p type semiconductor uh, gallium indium is added their valence electron is only 3 they form the covalent bond exit or complete covalent bond only 3 in the fourth covalent bond silicon or germanium contribute electron for forming the conduction band but uh, the gallium or indium will not contribute any electron because it has only 3 electrons in the outermost orbit so the it has an incomplete covalent bond it has always a thirst to attract the electrons so with that tendency it is formed a energy levels very close to the valency band so it is ready to accept the electrons from the valency band at any cost uh, you come to conclusion that when a pentavalent impurity is added a donor level is formed by the donor atom very close to the conduction band if we add a trivalent impurities like gallium and indium they have tendency to attract an electron so those atoms form energy level very close to the valency band it has tendency to accept the electron from valency band as a result holes are developed in the valency band on start to conductivity that is why they are called p type semiconductor the majority carriers are only holes minority carriers are electron it is opposite to the n type semiconductor in the case of n type semiconductor as electrons are available are donated by the donor atoms the donated electrons are entered into the conduction band more number of electrons are available in the conduction band less number of holes are available in the valency band so uh, n type semi in n type semiconductor electrons are uh, majority carrier and uh, holes are minority carrier this slide shows you the variations of fermi level as i said already to you about the fermi levels what is fermi level what is the purpose of fermi level it is a energy level which is split the filled energy level and unfilled energy level fermi level is the energy level which is separate the filled energy levels and unfilled energy levels by the electrons see in the case of intrinsic semiconductor the fermi level is exactly in between the valency band and the conduction band but in the case of a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor is not like that in the case of once again i would like to repeat in the case of huge semiconductor the fermi level is exactly in between the conduction band and the valency band 
in the case of n type semiconductor the fermi level is in between the conduction band and donor energy levels here as temperature increases electrons are moving from donor level to conduction band so emptying the donor levels as a result the fermi level which are lying in between the donor level and conduction band make a downward transition and approaches to the positions of fermi level when it was in the intrinsic state that means in intrinsic state the fermi level is exactly in between conduction band and valence band no so the fermi level in the case of eccentric semiconductor make a migration or make a downward transition towards the intrinsic fermi level range next questions we may ask that what will happen sir can we stop the downward transitions of the fermi level in the case of eccentric semiconductor means yes it is possible when means if more number of donor atoms are available in the donor levels donor energy levels whatever the energy given to it all the energies are utilized by the donor atom and get ionized and don't permit the energy levels to make a um, downward transition that means how much atoms how much impurities atoms to be added Uh, the number of donor atom added is um, around 10 power 23 atoms per meter cube if you add that much of atoms uh, the chances to make a downward transition for the fermi level in the case of eccentric semiconductor is very very less if anybody is asking question like that can you stop the downward transitions of eccentric uh, energy level in the case of eccentric semiconductor eccentric semiconductor means yes you can give answer like that yes we can stop sir by adding more number of impurities that is around 10 power 23 atom per meter cube we can stop the downward transitions of uh, fermi level in the case of eccentric semiconductor the reverse also is true if it is true in this case means what about in the case of p type semiconductor what will happen sir yes here also true here in the uh, fermi level transition are uh, not downward it is a upward direction in the upward transition also can be stopped by adding 10 power uh, 24 atoms per meter cube before that you just know that uh, in the case of p type semiconductor Uh, fermi level is um, formed between them or donor energy levels and valence band you don't forget that in the case of pta semiconductor the fermi level is lying in between the valence band and acceptor energy levels in the case of um, p type semiconductor they may have a migration uh, to the intrinsic um, fermi level that could be also stopped yeah dear students we are uh, coming to the end of this sessions uh, so far we studied uh, something about conductor semiconductor insulator mostly about semiconductor and uh, preparations of semiconductor type uh, n type semiconductor p type semiconductor and the variations of fermi level up to this we came after that we how to identify the conductor blanks to uh, semiconductor or conductor if semiconductor means n type semiconductor or p type semiconductor we how to find it Um, for this we are u- using the hall effect arrangement setups and the arrangement setup is uh, experimental setup is shown to you using this slide 
இன்ஸ்டட் ஆஃப் கன்சல்டிங் கண்டக்டர் இந்த ரெகுலர் ஷேப் லைக் எ ராட் ஷேப் யூ ஜஸ்ட் இமேஜின் தட் ஏ ரெக்டாங்குலர் ஷேப் கண்டக்டர் இந்த மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்டு எலக்ட்ரிக் ஃபீல்டு அப்ளைட் டைரக்ஷன் சார் பர்பண்டிகுலர் டு ஈச் அதர் தட் மீன்ஸ் கரண்ட் இஸ் அப்ளைடு எலாங் த எக்ஸ் ஆக்சிஸ் மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்ட் இஸ் அப்ளைடு எலாங் த ஜெட் ஆக்சிஸ் தீஸ் டூ சார் பர்பண்டிகுலர் டு ஈச் அதர் வென் அவர் த மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்ட் இஸ் அப்ளைடு பர்பண்டிகுலர் டு ஏ கண்டக்டர் கேரியிங் கரண்ட் இஸ் லீட் ஏ வோல்டேஜ் தட் மீன்ஸ் வென் அவர் ஏ மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்ட் இஸ் அப்ளைடு பெர்பண்டிகுலர் டு ஏ கண்டக்டர் கேரியிங் கரண்ட் ஏ வோல்டேஜ் இஸ் டெவலப்டு இனி டைரக்ஷன் பெர்பண்டிகுலர் டு போத் கரண்ட் அண்ட் மேக்னட்டிக் ஃபீல்டு இந்த டயக்ராம் பெர்பண்டிகுலர் டு எக்ஸ் ஆக்சிஸ் அண்ட் ஜெட் ஆக்சிஸ் ஸோ எலாங் த ஒய் ஆக்சிஸ் ஏ வோல்டேஜ் இஸ் டெவலப்டு இந்த வோல்டேஜ் டெவலப்டு கேன் பி மெசட் பை யூஸிங் ஏ மைக்ரோ வோல்ட் மீட்டர் தட் வோல்டேஜ் இஸ் கால்டு ஹால் வோல்டேஜ் by using this hall effect principle we can calculate the hall voltage and hall coefficient and the mobility of a conductor if we use um, n type semiconductor the hall coefficient will come in negative if we use p type semiconductor the hall coefficient will be positive and the experimental setup is shown to you by using this experimental setup by calculating the hall coefficient we can um, predict or decide whether the given conductor is p type semiconductor or n type semiconductor and the principle used here is hall effect what is a hall effect once again it is for you whenever a magnetic field is applied to a current carrying conductor electrons makes a downward transition in the conductor as it being a rectangular slab electrons are moving to the bottom side what about um, will be the upper side the upper side will be a positive charge stored there suppose in the case of p type semiconductor if the magnetic field applied perpendicular to a conductor carrying current means here all the positive charge carriers are making a downward transition so all the positive charges are present in the Uh, lower portions of the conductor all the negative charges are present in the upper portions of a conductor as a result a field is developed that field is hall field and the voltage developed is hall voltage this can be measured the hall voltage can be measured using the micro voltmeter then knowing the hall voltage magnetic flux current and breadth of the slab we can calculate the hall coefficient or h if it is positive it is n type semiconductor so pcp type semiconductor if it is negative it is a n type semiconductor so to calculate the hall coefficient the thing only we need to calculate is a hall voltage breadth can be measured by using a screw gauge or vernier caliper current that is going along the x axis can be calculated by using a, a milliammeter or micrometer magnetic flux also may be measured by using the magnetic flux these are all can be measured by using a specific instrument and the hall voltage developed alone depends upon them 
టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ సెమీ కండక్టర్స్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎన్ టైప్ సెమీ కండక్టర్ ఎలక్ట్రాన్ మైకే మైగ్రేషన్ టు డౌన్వర్డ్ డైరెక్షన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ పీ టైప్ సెమీ కండక్టర్ హోల్స్ విల్ మేకే డౌన్వర్డ్ ట్రాన్సెషన్ అస్ అ చార్జ్ క్యారీస్ ఆర్ సెపరేటెడ్ పాజిటివ్ అండ్ నెగిటివ్ చార్జ్ క్యారీస్ ఆర్ సెపరేటెడ్ ఏ వోల్టేజ్ ఇస్ డెవలప్డ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దస్ వోల్టేజ్ ఏ హాల్ ఫీల్డ్ ఇస్ డెవలప్డ్ హియర్ వీ జస్ట్ కాల్కులేట్ ద ఓన్లీ ద హాల్ వోల్టేజ్ విహెచ్ బై నోయింగ్ దట్ వన్ వీ క్యాన్ కాల్కులేట్ ద హాల్ కోఫిషియంట్ ఇఫ్ హాల్ కోఫిషియంట్ వ్యాల్యూ ఇస్ పాజిటివ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఏ పీ టైప్ సెమీ కండక్టర్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నెగటివ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఏ ఎన్ టైప్ సెమీ కండక్టర్ Okay dear thank you we shall see in the next session